Hello everyone and welcome back to What Matters. Looking forward to bringing you some of the top news stories from this week and trust me, there is some big stories in here, some really important ones, so do stick with me for this one. So, let's start on Monday. So, a heater which exploded outside a pub injuring three people has been brought there by a customer, police have said. Police have said that the heating device was not one supplied by the pub, but it was brought to the premises without anyone knowing, which is a bit suspicious. Um, two women in their 20s remain in hospital as of Saturday after the incident at the King's Head in Great Carnival in Suffolk. Police have said their injuries are not life-threatening, but they are certainly life-changing. This is a devastating story and a very strange one indeed. Now from exploding heaters on Monday to true heroism here on Tuesday. A man has died after jumping in the Thames to rescue a woman should be honoured, his father has said. Now, I don't want to cause any offence and disrespect the man in name by me poorly pronouncing his name. I have had a go at it and I just cannot get it. So I think the safest thing to do um, is to just put his name on screen here. So um, there it is. And yeah, as I said, I don't want to cause any offence. So I, I would rather, rather do this. Um, so the 20 year old entered the water on Saturday night when he saw the woman fall from the bridge. Students and staff from the Harris Academy, his former school, gathered in the playground for two minutes for a round of applause in his honour. The Mayor Sadiq Khan described the man as a true hero of our city who gave his life trying to save another. Home Secretary Priti Patel has also said, It was a truly selfless act of heroism from a brave young man and my personal condolences go to his family and friends for such a, a brave and such an honourable thing to do and um, such a sad, sad lo loss of life. On Wednesday, a cheeky little flat renovation has called the Prime Minister some serious problems. The Tory party is facing an electoral commission inquiry over claims a donor initially covered the costs. Any money, gi any money given to the PM must be declared when doing extra renovations. PM standards advisor Lord Getter is examining whether Mr Johnson needs to declare any donations. Labour finds, however, that Lord Greta is not fully independent because the PM can ignore his findings because he works for the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister receives a public grant of £30,000 a year to cover renovations at his Downing Street flats. So that was a nice little chandelier and a little bit, of, little bit of John Lewis wallpaper. But newspapers suggest that the bill for the latest work could be as high as £200,000. Come on, Boris, what you got in there? A jacuzzi? Boris has said that he has paid the cost himself, but he's failed to specify whether this happened when he received the first bill or whether he loaned the money and later repaid it. Starmer has described the situation as becoming farcical. Um, there's a lot of talk in the House of Commons about this and the Prime Minister could very easily and very quickly clear this all up by just being honest about the whole investigation and actually releasing that information himself. He's being hesitant about it, which uh, puts more question marks over the doings of it. And on Thursday, a majority of UK students think that there should be a compulsory test on understanding sexual consent at the start of university, a survey has suggested. The Higher Education Policy Institute survey found that 58% of students backed the idea of having to pass a test to show they fully understand consent. A think tank survey found that out of 1,000 students, only a quarter felt they had been adequately prepared by sex education in school and have a comprehensive understanding of sexual consent. The report examined student experiences of sex and relationships and the findings are as follows. 43% have not had sex before going to university and 25% have never intimately kissed anyone. Among male students, 66% had not had sex during their time as a student and 53% of female students had not had sex during their time at university. Nick Hillman, the institute's director, said the results could help students navigate what is a key transitioning point in their lives and I agree with him on that, I think that's important. Among all students, 11% were voluntary obtaining sex and two thirds were not currently in a relationship. So there is obviously a divide there and a gap on understanding. So I think as a board, a one sort of um, set test for everyone would be a really valuable thing. So everyone's on the same page with what consent is. It's obviously something which um, must be adhered to uh, for obviously the multitude of reasons that we all know and acknowledge. On Friday, the world's longest pedestrian suspension bridge is open in Portugal. Nestling among the rocky mountains of Portugal's Arroco Geopark, it's the longest pedestrian suspension bridge in the world. Costing 2.3 million euros, it's due to open and receive visitors from the 3rd of May. So it's quite exciting this one, so if you ever travel to Portugal, be sure to go check it out. And on Saturday, football clubs, players, athletes and a number of sporting bodies have begun a four-day boycott of social media in an, in an attempt to tackle abuse and discrimination on their platforms. 
It began yesterday at 3 p.m. and will run until the end of Monday. On Friday, Manchester United unveiled their own analysis and found that there's been a 350% increase in abuse, with 3,300 posts targeting players. And out of those, it found 86% of the posts were racist abuse and 8% were homophobic. That's just in one club, and staying with Manchester United for a second, I can thankfully say the club has sanctioned six individuals for online abuse towards the Spurs forward, Human Son, following their 3-1 defeat to Tottenham on the 11th of April. Now, not only as a Spurs fan, am I glad that Human Son has got some justice here, but for the whole sporting community and the whole online community, it's important that we are tackling these individuals, and this boycott is a fantastic way of doing so. I really, really, really hope it comes to something, because online abuse is shocking. It's awful, and there needs to be justice. That's all from what matters for this week. I hope you've all had a fantastic week. Um, I look forward to bringing you the news next week. I have to say, What Matters is starting to die down, but don't worry, I am going to be bringing out a new series, um, which um, hopefully we'll be able to work on. I'm still working on it now, but anyway, yes. That's all from this week. I hope you all have a lovely week, and I'll speak to you all next week. Take care.